YouTube watchers and welcome to my new channel. Um, I've decided to film this video for my own selfish purposes because my boyfriend has just recently left for boot camp and it's been three days and I already don't know what to do with myself. And I'm fairly certain that his family and my family and my friends no longer want to hear me talk about how sad I am and how like much I miss him. So I figured I could channel my energy into something different and at least create videos that take my mind off of it or create videos that maybe help people who are in the same similar situation as me with a loved one, particularly a boyfriend, going into Coast Guard or a partner. Um, so let's get started with our story. My boyfriend and I met four years ago, roughly, at our job and we went to high school together and we stayed friends ever since and then about six months ago we started dating. Now, let's talk about me in high school. I started high school swearing against relationships, swearing against boys. I never wanted a boyfriend. Um, I thought that they were a distraction from my studies and focusing on my education, and all I wanted to do was get ahead and get into college. Now I'm in college, but back when we started dating, I was still in high school, and I had also been in traumatic experiences when I had first entered high school and middle school, so like, I just didn't want to be that close to anybody and to have to trust them with the most vulnerable parts of myself. Somehow, this kid, my boyfriend, his name is Joe, found a way into my heart and he's been the center of my life ever since. He's always at my house. Even though I don't want him to come over, he still comes over. And like my family loves him and we've been on vacation together. We go shopping together, I call him every morning, I call him every night, like, he's such a huge part of my life. And I have friends, I have best friends, that I also talk to on a daily basis or a weekly basis, but they're not as much a presence in my life as he has become in these past six months. Naturally, saying goodbye to him was very, very hard. It was really difficult. And I don't think anybody actually could understand that loss until it happens to them. And I don't wish it on anybody. But I'm going to get into the story of how he's le how he left for boot camp and how that process went so that if any of you are getting prepared to say goodbye to a loved one going into the military, you can at least know how the first two days, the first two day process of shipping out goes. Uh, so he left Monday, September 11th from, my, from where we live, like our town. He left to go to uh, what we call MEPS. To, I believe he signed some paperwork, and then from MEPS they bust him. We live in New York, so it's actually Fort Hamilton that he went to. And then from Fort Hamilton, they bust him to Staten Island, and he stayed there overnight into Tuesday morning. So his mom went out there to meet him and had dinner with him and whatnot, and they had a curfew for 10 p.m. Monday night. They had to be in the hotel lights out by 10 p.m., but while he was there that evening, they had, like, a game room that I, I think with video games and stuff, and they all, like, got to hang out. The recruits all got to hang out and meet each other. And I guess that's good, because then at least they go in knowing at least they know somebody. So he left his mom's company at 9 p.m. and went to into his hotel room where he then FaceTimed me for the last time for the next eight weeks. And I was sad. I was sad to know that I... That this was, it was just very final for me, I think. And I know he's not dead, but uh, still very final for somebody that's in your life, like, every day and always calling you, always texting you, like, such a huge part of you. So, he went to bed after our FaceTime call, and then I think wake up, he woke up at, like, 4 a.m. Tuesday morning. And then he, he went to his mom's hotel room, finished up packing and labeling his, his bag, and then showered, and they were at breakfast, and then I think they were on the bus, from Staten Island back to Fort Hamilton by very early in the morning because they had to be there by 9 a.m. His mom was already in Staten Island and she drove back to Fort Hamilton that morning. His stepmom and his father were still where we live and they were driving out in the morning to meet him at Fort Hamilton. So they picked me up and we took the drive. So we left my house at 6.15 a.m. And this is talking about, like, we're going to Brooklyn. We're, like, basically going to New York City. We're in morning commute traffic. So we did not, we left at 6.15, and we did not arrive there until, like, 8.37. And this is, it's, like, not two hours away. It was just that much traffic that we were in. 
so we get there and then we went to it was like this trailer where you go and you sign in you give them your license and your registration information and they give you a parking pass for your car and then you go to a different lot and then you walk to maps we get there and they would not let us in until 9 a.m and then once they let us in at 9 we walked through a i don't know those those things that you walk through that like beep when you walk through them I don't know what those are called. They have them in the airports. We walked through one of those and signed in our names. One family member signed in all of our names. So I think to make the process faster, instead of each individual person signing in their individual name, it was my boyfriend's father signed in his name, his daughter's name, his wife's name, and my name. And then they gave us a visitor sticker to put on our on our clothes and showed us to where the family room is. We sat in the family room for maybe five to ten minutes and then my boyfriend's uncle came in because he's a New York City cop detective, I believe, or cop. I don't, sorry if I get his job wrong and he ever sees this video, but I think he's a detective. He came and Joe's mom was still not there yet. She came shortly after and then... I don't remember, it was a long day, I don't remember if Joe got into the family room before his mom came or just about the exact same time and came after, but he was, I remember he walked in really early, like we did not have to wait long for him to get into the family room, so it was probably a few minutes after nine and he walked in and I was just so happy to see him, to know that I was getting to see him like one last time. And he sat down next to me, so the family room is, has like a little, like, platform at the front with a podium on it and then chairs down the center and chairs so there would be chairs all along this wall so we were originally sitting along this wall and I was sitting in maybe like this chair so he was sitting right next to me his stepmom right next to me and then the rest of his family in the area seated or, st or standing I think his uncle and his stepfather stood by the doorway the entrance to the family room so he sits with us for a while and then an army sergeant, a U.S. army sergeant, comes in to talk to all of the families and the recruits present in the room. He talks about a lot of stuff. I was crying, so I was only really listening to the important stuff. So I remember him saying that there would be a 30-minute briefing where the recruits would have to leave the family room and go get their 30-minute briefing. And then after their 30-minute briefing, the sergeant would come back in. And he would start calling the names of the recruits that were ready to be sworn in so that the family members could go into the swear the oath of office room, I guess is what you'd call it. I don't know. The room where they take their, like, the, where they get sworn in. The families could go in there, watch the ceremony, and then get pictures with their recruits afterwards in that room by all the flags and stuff. So he's saying all that. And I'm, like, like not crying, like, making noise, but tears are just coming out of my eyes. More and more and more tears. And I'm looking at all his family that have known him for his whole life, and, like, they're all holding it up remarkably better than I am. And I'm sitting there, only been dating their son, or stepson, or nephew, or brother, for six months. And I'm, like, it's, I was just distraught. I don't, I don't know what got into me, but I felt very, very bad and embarrassed to be making such a scene, but I couldn't stop myself. So, again, thought I could hold it up better than that. I was wrong. He then leaves right after the sergeant finished talk finishes talking and goes to get um, his briefing. Well, we're all in the family room just hanging out waiting, talking amongst each other. And his one-year-old baby brother is running up and down this family room. And the uncle buys him chips. So he's running around with his mouth full of chips. And then somehow he gets up on the podium and is running like across, across the podium. So... The sergeant walks back in, and this little baby is on the podium behind him, because he's standing in front, he's not on the platform, but standing in front of it, and Robbie's on the platform behind him, and the sergeant starts, he has papers in his hand, and he starts calling off the recruits, so calling their last name, Williams, uh, and then, like, going through the names, going through the names. Joe's mom now is trying to get Robbie off the platform. She runs onto the platform from this side, and Robbie's over here, and runs to get Robbie, and Robbie runs this way. So then she runs back, and Robbie runs back over here, and then she gets off the platform, and runs in front, ducks below, and runs in front of the sergeant to grab Robbie, and Robbie ends up back over here. So she walks back over here, and she stops, like, making, trying to make a scene, you know, she didn't want to, so she just stood, and then Robbie's laughing, with his mouth full of chips, 
and then coughs, gags, and his face turns red. And she puts her hands under his mouth just in time to get all the vomit that comes out of him, just as the U.S. Army sergeant calls, Rogaki, you, your family can leave. Or whatever he said. We all get up, and they, they, you weren't allowed in the lobby. Like, there was no, if you had to leave, you had to go outside the building. You weren't allowed to just stand up in the lobby and hang out. So, we all get out of the family room pretty quickly and remove, and we go straight to the oath of office room and Joe's mom goes to wash her hands because it's filled with baby puke. Uh, and she gets back to the oath of office room in time. It was actually a little bit of a while before they got sworn in. So, all, I have pictures and I will insert them. But he was standing in these lines with all these other recruits waiting to get sworn in and they took, took a little while before the military personnel who swore him in came into the room to swear him in and then there was a speech before they got sworn in and then they got sworn in and then we got to take pictures i did not cry during swearing in ceremony i was so proud of myself i was actually perfectly fine i thought i found it kind of boring like i i'm so grateful for all our soldiers that everything they do to protect our country but i thought the swearing in ceremony was boring and i didn't find i just didn't cry i didn't find it sad just yet but the next part I will find sad, so hold on. So he gets sworn in, and we take pictures, and then after that, they tell the recruits to leave to go sign more paperwork, and they send the families back to the family room. About ten minutes later, Joe comes back with a sandwich that they provided him, cooked two cookies, two chocolate chip cookies, and a, a water bottle and a bag of Lay's chips is the food that they provided them with. It's just me, the stepmom, and the little sister and the brother, the 14 year old, his 14, 15 year old brother. So I text his mom cause she had left with the stepfather to go walk the baby to put him to put him down for his nap. And I was like, Joe just came back with food. And I just let her know the uncle and the dad, the dad had to go to work and the uncle had to go to work. So they left right after he got sworn in. Um, so we're eating with him. And then as soon as he sits down and he's sitting down for maybe 10 minutes. Cause I remember his, his, brother and the, his 15 year old brother his name is Kenny so Kenny and little sister asked for a cookie and even at this time when he knows he doesn't know when he'll be able to eat again or I think he did know when he was going to be able to eat again but it was not until later in the day and I would assume that he'd want to fill up he shared that cookie and I looked at him and I was like I don't understand how some per one person can be so selfless but he did he shared the cookie and right after that excuse me he Got called out of the room again. I don't know why they didn't say. But the next thing we knew is that we were, I think we were still waiting in there. His mom came back with the baby napping. And then his stepmom said she was going to take the little sister to go to the bathroom. And then right when she left to go to the bathroom, somebody who works in the building came in. She wasn't dressed in, in an army uniform or a military uniform, so I'm not sure if she is military personnel or not, but she was just dressed in regular clothes, and she came in and she said, all families of recruits can go wait outside to see their their recruit, like, get onto the, pack onto, get onto the bus and get ready to leave. So we have to text the stepmom and be like, oh my god, we're going outside, um, try to hurry up, and then she comes out of the bathroom pretty quickly, and we all go wait outside. So all these recruits come walking out of the door, and as they're walking out of MAPS, they're, we're, all, we're all clapping for them, and they get onto the bus, and the bus leaves. And we're still waiting there for Joe's group of recruits to come out, and they just don't. It takes them quite a while, and I see him, I remember I was looking through the door, and it's kind of tinted, but I could see him getting his bag and getting ready, but he wasn't lining up to come outside. Eventually, the same lady that told us we could wait outside came back out and said, families with recruits going to Cape May and we're all like yes and she's like you guys have 30 more minutes you guys can wait in the family room so we all went back into the family room I think at this point his stepmom took his little sister to the bathroom and Joe came back in and got to sit with us for 30 minutes so I think those last 30 minutes I appreciate more than anything um uh, was holding his hand and leaning on his shoulder and just trying to memorize what it feels like to be that close to him because I'm not going to feel it for a while. And who knows, when he gets back from boot camp, he can go to Alaska. So I might not feel it for a while after that too. So I was just getting myself used to what I was about to face. Um, after the 30 minutes was up, they called them to load onto the bus. We all went outside. We said, we gave hugs and our kisses and we said our final goodbyes. And I remember he waved out of the door 
of the bus before uh, they pulled out and they pulled out. Now, that's my story. That's how everything went. Here is the advice I'm going to give to anybody with a loved one, particularly a boyfriend, going into boot camp. Do not think it will be easy because it will not be easy. My last three days have gone on so long, and I'm in college, and I love school, and I love clubs, and I, I, it was passing so fast when he was here, and it's just taking forever for a day to end for me now. Today's really the first day that I've been able to sit down here and talk about this without crying. The second thing I'm going to tell you, please do your research beforehand, because I have made the mistake of doing my research now that he's gone. Um... What I've realized is that when I thought he was going to go to boot camp, come home for five days, and go to a station and be stationed there for four years, that is not what happens. And some of you military wives or girlfriends of people who have been in the military already for a while now probably listening to me right now and being like, you're so stupid. How did you not know that they don't get stationed in one place for four years? Maybe I was in denial. Maybe I didn't want to know the truth. But now I do because I have researched it. And they get stationed until they have to go to A school. And then after A school, they have to move with their units. So the longest they could be in one place is maybe two years. So get used to the idea that you're going to have to, if you're in college, start planning your classes so that you have either Monday, Tuesday off to make it Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, a four-day weekend, or planning your classes with Thursday and Friday off so you can do Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, so that at least you can go see him maybe once a month or twice a month um, if you have to, or he can come see you. It's going to be like doing long distance, but if you really love each other, you'll do it, and you will not have a problem with it because the love remains there even if the person is not. Um, the third piece of crucial information, while these recruits are on their, like, trot, like, on their journey to Cape May, from New York, they take a bus to the Philadelphia airport. They have their phones that, that the entire bus ride. And then when they get to the airport, they're, they were given $23 checks to get lunch or dinner. I don't, probably dinner, because they got to the airport at, like, 4 or 5 o'clock. Um, and then at the airport, why you guys may wondering they're going to the airport. I guess all the recruits have to travel to Cape May together. So the New York recruits went to um, the Philadelphia airport to meet with all the other recruits that maybe from other states were flying in, I guess, or from other states that were bused also to the Philadelphia airport to meet there. Um, so he met with all the other recruits. They got lunch and then from the Philadelphia, or dinner, and then from the Philadelphia airport, they took a coach bus. The first bus was like a shuttle bus. The second bus they took from the Philadelphia airport was a coach bus, and that took them to Cape May, and it was maybe a two, two and a half hour drive. And he had his phone that entire time as well. And I remember he called, from what I know, I'm not him, but I know I was the last call. So I assume he called his father, and then he called his mother, and then he called me, because those were the last calls he had where he could actually talk to us. And I remember the last thing he said to me is... I see the station, it's so beautiful, and then I love you. And I did not have a chance to say I love you back. Something I really regret, I should have said it first. Because he always hates when I don't tell him I love you back. He told me on my phone call that he would have another phone call when he got to the base before they took his phone. And he told me he wanted me to go to his mom's house to be there to hear it. So, it was Tuesday. My dad gets home from work at 8, and my mom gets home from work at 10, and I watch my sister on a Tuesday. I don't have class. My dad came home at 8, and I was like, I, I drive, but I drive very minimally. I can't even pull my Jeep out of the garage. So I was like, Dad, get the Jeep out of the garage. I'm going to Joe's house. And they live, like, down the road. And I booked it to his mother's house. And we I sat there from maybe 8.16 until 8... It was the end of 8 o'clock or the beginning of 9. And we got the call. And he said something along the lines of, I only have 30 seconds or a minute, so please don't interrupt me. I have arrived safe. Please don't be worried if you don't hear from me. I will have little to no time to write you. And then, like, goodbye, or I love you. And his mom was going to say, we love you, Joe. And he always, he hung up the phone so fast after that that she didn't even have the chance to say, say that. Or if he heard her, we don't know. But that scripted phone call was very sad. Very, very sad. And that beep, beep, beep when that phone ended was the most menacing beep 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 that I've ever ever heard in my entire life. So it's definitely very final and very scary when you realize that they have to do this on their own. You're not there to support them. You're not there to give them a pat on their back or pick them up when they're down. Like this is an endeavor all their own and I just needed to let that all out and I believe that they it's gonna be hard. 
I made the mistake of watching the Cape Bay video, Cape May video, and um, all this other stuff about how the training goes after he was already gone, and then I felt really bad because I knew he was going to be having a rough time these first couple weeks, and that I wasn't going to be there to help him, or that I can't feel his pain or his relief or his happiness or his sadness, I, I just can't experience that with him, and it was a very hard thing for me to deal with. But what I've realized is I have to focus on my education too. I'm a freshman in college and that's important and he has to focus on himself. And after a couple weeks I think it'll become like scheduled to them. They will get used to it. They'll get accustomed to it. The workouts won't hurt as much because they'll be used to the workouts. And getting screamed at won't scare them as much because they'll be getting, they'll have gotten used to getting screamed at already. So it's not that bad. And I just wanted to make this video to let anybody else out there know who's maybe just gotten into a relationship or has been in a relationship or is thinking of getting into a relationship with somebody that wants to go into the military, just so that you know. Do your research ahead. Do it way ahead. And look into all the jobs and all the different bases and how boot camp will go and prepare yourself. Because if you do not, you will be crushed. And I am 100% certain I am more crushed than him because he is busy. He does not have time to think about what I'm thinking about or what I'm doing. But I'm sitting here constantly thinking about what he's doing and how he's feeling and how his day's going and who's yelling at who and and what he's passing or what he's failing. So, oh, also, there's a Facebook group. If you don't have a Facebook, make a Facebook because the Coast Guard makes a Facebook group for every unit that goes in. Um, and they update you with like what they're doing, how to write letters and stuff like that. So if you guys want a video of any of the information that I can compile from all the resources that I have, I will make that, but I'll make it maybe a couple weeks down the line so that I actually get the experience from doing it myself before I give you the advice and I can tell you any tips and tricks that I've learned myself or picked up. But in the meantime, thank you for listening to me. If you like me and you want more videos about this, subscribe and like my video. And I hope I'll be back soon.